I swear, I really do check to see if the microphone is working before I start recording these videos. Oh, what a fail this weekend's been. Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Um, in this new and improved video, including audio, <laughs> uh, we're going to revisit Trump's VP picks. Um, apparently, five VP hopefuls went racing down to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring and then went out on the Sunday uh, news circuits and basically trashed Joe Biden in Joe Biden's America in their attempts to uh, uh, twist themselves into pretzels to please Donald Trump. Uh, this is par for the course with Trump. I've made many uh, a video and comment that these VPs, it's like an episode of The Apprentice, which is the same way he treated his kids when they were small. He would have them compete for everything to his... Uh, and he would be the judge and jury on things. Uh, ironically, Trump is now going to be the person on trial <laughs> instead of his kids or these VP picks. But I want to go through um, each of the VP uh, uh, picks and then, um, you know, what he likes about them and what he doesn't like about them. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, Elise Stefanik. Um, she went out to say that uh, this is Joe Biden's Democratic Party with regards to the, uh, the protests on the campuses. And the reality is this is why Republicans continue to pull stronger and stronger because we represent peace and security and standing up for the Constitution and supporting our ally in Israel and, content and uh, condemn anti-Semitism. Yeah. Okay, and that whole January 6th thing was just a picnic and a walk in the park, right? Now, uh, interesting, Lee Stefanik was the, like one of the heads of the RNC, and uh, Trump asked her to step down so Laura Trump could be in there and make sure that he gets all the money. So, come on down. It was a great reading yesterday. I'm, I'm sorry that there was no audio for it because... <laughs> it literally a uh, thing like Trump liked about her was that she was willing to sacrifice anything, even if, how valuable it was to her to placate him. So what does Trump uh, look at at least Stefanik? Um, what does he like about her? Temperance. Um, yeah, there's like a patience with her that um, he, he asks her to do something and she'll figure out a way to get it done and that she blends well with other Republicans. Um, now, she might be a MAGA person herself, but she can blend in with the other Republicans and bring that um, and uh, kind of bring them on board. There's also an intuition about her that he likes. Uh, he also, though, it's kind of she's also beneath him and he knows it. Um her her life choices are flexible depending on what he wants. She's amenable to what he wants, and she will always be at a crossroads and pivot when he asks her to pivot. Um, I will leave perverted uh, interpretations of this alone and just say that she gets things done. She He tells her to do something, she actually gets things done. And yeah, she'll go out and advocate for him. He tells her to advocate, she advocates. It's like he says, jump, she says, how high? Type of thing over there. Um, and she'll echo his values, maybe even bring money in. But she was the head of the RNC. So she brought a lot of money into Trump via the RNC. So he has a positive view of her because she did bring money in for him at one point in life. Okay, what is it that Trump doesn't like about Elise Stefanik? You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can not like about her. It's just... The way people uh, uh, compromise their morals and ethics for this man is absolutely astounding. All right. What is it that Elise Stefanik, what does he Trump not like about Elise Stefanik as, as like a VP pick here? <sighs> he just likes other people better. He's, she's just not his top pick. 
you know. Uh, Trump is into optics, and she may not be hitting all the optics. Oh, right, then I hit on this yesterday. You know what part of the problem is, and forgive me, this is not David speaking. This is David trying to get into Trump's energy and Trump's mind. Um, he is very concerned about appearances with women. And Elise Stefanik has kind of two phases. You've got uh, thin and heavy Elise Stefanik. And he wants thin Elise Stefani. He thinks she's got the better optics and she's probably in her heavy form right now and he doesn't like that. I, again, that's not my opinion. That's me interpreting cards, seeing how, um, knowing that he likes optics and think trying to think like he thinks on certain things. This is why, for instance, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is not his VP pick. Just, she's a bulldog. She goes out and does everything he asks her to. And he doesn't like her look. Um, and you forgive me on this one because I've seen the memes. They have a picture of her next to Miss Piggy with a lazy eye. <laughs> and the, the, the resemblance is remarkable. It's also the same reason why he doesn't want Marjorie Taylor Greene. The optics are not good on her. That's not who he wants. If Carrie Lake weren't so BS crazy, he'd probably like her a lot. So it's just not his pick. It's not his choice of like... I'll, and there's four cups here. So I think... Um, there's like four viable candidates and out of the five I'm going to read on. And he's just like, yeah, no, 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 not just not my, my pick. Um, it's, she's done. It's like the world card. It's done. He's done with her. She's, he, she's done everything he wants, which is basically give him the money in the RNC. The fact that she'll go out and help him is great, but you know, he's just, yeah, not it. Yeah. It's optics. It's, the, the TV time, the messaging, um, uh, he just, he doesn't see that, she just doesn't have the look that he wants when he's ruling the world. And I, and honestly, I think he feels like, and this would be way more strategicness for Donald Trump, he feels like she's much better in her position in the House helping him than she would be as his VP pick. So... It's not his, she's not in his top three. She's like number four, just like this one right here. There's three ahead of her. She's number four out of these five people that are, uh, these five people are in, in uh, competition. Now, the person who I think is number five is Christy Nome. Um, it, number one in his heart, but number five on the list because, well, <laughs> killing a dog, you know, uh, conservatives, do go hunting and they do go and do they do have bird dogs and that while they I'm sure they appreciate the ruthlessness for a lot of them uh, shooting your 14 month old puppy in a gravel pit probably isn't their first pick they would probably look at her and say what kind of idiot is she doesn't know how to train a dog you don't just go shooting it go get a trainer next time you lazy insert your favorite insult of the of the female gender here okay so yeah uh so at least stefanik mm, looking like number four of four on this one um now we've got a uh, marco rubio here's a fun one he was on fox news sunday and called biden weak and feeble adding international students should have had their visas revoked if they're found defacing statues ripping down american flags and putting up palestinian flags Oh, there's there's some open minded there, mindedness there, Marco. Did your, where'd your family come from? Uh, would you like to have been treated that same way? Also, um, the thing with Marco Rubio is that uh, he's a uh, he's from Florida, a senator in Florida. Trump is running as a candidate from Florida, and according to the Twelfth Amendment, electors um, it requires electors to vote for at least one candidate from a different state than theirs. Meaning, either Trump or Rubio, we need to change their state of residency in order to collect electoral votes from Florida. If Trump were to tap Rubio for that role, so when asked about that, Rubio decided to pivot and say that uh, uh, <laughs> instead of. Before anyone decides to move from their state, you better make sure to move to a state where there's not some DA that makes a career going after Republicans. Great. So he just wouldn't answer the question, which of them's going to move? I got it. I got news for you, Marco. 
Trump ain't moving. That would be you that's moving. And imagine if he moves from Florida, is he allowed to be the senator anymore? It seemed to me if you declare a different state of residency, you can't be the senator for the state you're in. That's not discussed here. That's just uh, speculation on my part. Um, uh, he, uh, Rubio said Sunday he tried to tamp down speculation if he'd be Trump's vice president. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, let's go take a look at him real quick. Marco Rubio, what's going on with him? What does Trump like about him as a potential VP pick? Um, he likes how strong he projects strength. Maybe he's even def uh, would defer to the emperor, but we've got an emperor energy here. Um, hmm. uh, Rubio wouldn't mind lying, cheating, or stealing to uh, help the matters. Yeah, I know. I know. You're here. Everybody's so pleased that this is now a La Chatte Noire reading. Oh, Nico. So, uh, brief segue while I pet the cat before I remove him. Um, he uh, he got to meet uh, the new kitten yesterday, and all he did was hiss at her. And hissed at her again this morning. Eventually, he'll sort it out and realize that she's actually going to be a lot of fun for him so that he doesn't always have to be the center of attention. But right now, he's being a little bit needy. So we're gonna go put him on my computer chair. Bring the chair over here so he can hang out with me. And you guys can see him too. There you go. Join everybody. See, look, everybody gets their black cat fix. Okay. Um, what does he like about Marco Rubio as a potential VP pick? Uh, Rubio will lie, cheat, and steal. He'll do anything to uh, to get through there. Kind of a ruthlessness in there. Uh, this was happening yesterday, too. Rubio was actually doing really, really well as far as uh, this goes. And, you know, I think Trump, right now, I think uh, Rubio... I, personally would not have thought Rubio would be at the top of his list here, but I think Rubio's at the top of his list. Um, Rubio also kind of looks down the road a little bit. I almost wonder if, um, yeah, and he likes how he goes after Joe Biden. Yeah, it, it, this is guy, he's kind of leading the list right now. He's ruthless. And at the same time, you know, Trump can get him to work him to exhaustion and he's young and will do that and can work really hard. So Trump doesn't have to. <clears throat> I also wonder, this is kind of a getting ready for somebody. He's somebody that Trump also wouldn't mind throwing under the bus given half an opportunity. <laughs> now, you got to be careful what you wish for in when you serve uh, Donald Trump, because you don't work with him. You work for him. And do not think for a second that you aren't anything but five steps below him. Um, in some ways, Marco Rubio, the vibe is he's kind of like Michael Cohen. Uh, when Michael Cohen was representing Donald Trump. Somebody who would take a bullet for him, really uh, faithful and stuff like that. But not like a Walt Nada type faithful, a, a different type, a more aggressive uh, light sheet and steel. Uh, type of thing. Star card just popped up. Yeah, I think right now Marco Rubio might be your uh, your front runner. Even though Trump said he wanted to get a woman in there, um, I think Marco Rubio is kind of his, uh, at least the card so far in both readings I've done, have pointed to Rubio uh, kind of like making to the final two. Um, Let's see. What does Trump not like about Rubio as his VP pick? What's kind of his criticism of him? The high priestess. He's got secrets. There's there's something about Rubio that he doesn't trust. Like Rubio's holding back information on him, and I would believe that. Um, we got the Queen of Swords. He's also decisive. He's also the kind of person who's decisive, which is great, but Trump wants to be the one making orders, and Rubio can be just as ruthless as Trump. Um, let's see, we got the, the working, <laughs> okay, um, 
he does he, he feels like uh, Rubio's holding back information like you know Ruby is the type of guy that would work for Trump and then have his own kickback kickback scheme going on that you know he's cutting deals behind Trump's back to make money like he's he's the type of guy that would have a side hustle that would take money out of Trump's pocket the gr the the grift may not be as good with Rubio um I think he also thinks that Rubio is young and just a little bit odd but Rubio also is kind of a sociopath and ruthless so the same reason why he likes him is the same reason why he dislikes him because there's Rubio is a lot like Trump, I guess is what I'm saying. And he's a little bit concerned about that. But right now, again, Rubio seems to be uh, a lot closer to the front of the pack than, say, at least Stefanik, at least the way these cards are uh, coming out. All right, who are we going to go to next? Uh, let's go to... Oh, let's go to that uh, North, uh, the North Dakota governor. Let's see if I can find him here. Uh, Burgum. Um, Burgum believes that uh, Biden won the 2020 election, but falsely claimed there's a huge number of regularities due to changed voting rules. That's not going to fly with Trump. You can't just, Governor Burgum just can't say, that's the case because that's not saying that the election was stolen and Trump's whole mantra is the election was stolen. So I don't know. Doug Burgum, is that his name? I don't know how he's going to be able to pull this one off here. Yeah, Doug Burgum, North Dakota governor. How's What does Trump like about Doug Burgum? Besides the fact that he won't tow the, the Trump fantasy here. Um, ah, well, kind of like Rubio. He he works hard and he would be do, he would do well for raising money. Uh, Trump and Trump campaign is all about the money. Uh, Burgum is the kind of guy that can get the dark money over to Trump uh, and get backroom deals done. He's good at moving things forward, kind of like Elise Stefanik in that regard, and he's a fighter. And. He, it's interesting because I just said, you know, he's not pulling the, the, the party line, but it's like he can find new sources of money, new sources for uh, Trump to grift off of. Maybe he hasn't grifted enough off of North Dakota ends, and that's like an untapped resource for Trump. So Burgum appears to be uh, what Trump likes about him is that fundraising would work really well. And he might be able to, you know, get dark money for the pack and stuff along those lines. Okay, what does he not like about Burgum as a VP? What does Trump not like about Governor, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum as his VP pick? What's his, what's the downside? <clears throat> Ace of Swords, um, sort of truth, justice. Yeah, he's he's too honest. No, he's not carrying the line that the election was stolen. His sort of truth and justice isn't pointed the right direction. We all know the election was stolen in Trump's world. So why would you say it was he lost because of COVID restrictions? I mean, yeah, that's part of it, but that's not the whole part of it. You're you're kind of missing the point. And that's from Page of Swords. He's like, he's here he is. <laughs> the sword is missing the point. <laughs> if you can see that at home. The point is off the page. It's like, Burgum has the right idea, but he's missing the point. Um, I never thought I'd say this. Burgum might have too much integrity. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, again, if you're if you're not going to carry the lie, maybe Trump doesn't think he's manipulated. Trump may not be able to convince him to to get, surrender his morals and his ethics. Um, either Burgum's got too much friends, or is a false friend. There's a, a there's a lack of trust with Burgum. Um, he is a governor of his own state. He does get things done. He's independent uh, thinking. He has his own ideas, and he just may not be as manipulatable. He's not Mike Pence in that regard. He'd be friendly enough, I think, 
But Trump wouldn't trust him because Trump doesn't own his soul. And Trump needs to own his soul in order to... Uh, the cat left here. Trump needs to own his soul in order for uh, that person to be their VP pick. So I'm going to say Bergam and Elise Stefanik are... Um, he, he might be a, a step above Elise Stefanik, uh, but he's not, he's no Marco Rubio. <laughs> okay, now Tim, uh, Tim Scott, is that our senator? Here, let's see. Um, yeah, Tim Scott, South Carolina senator. Now, Tim Scott went on and said, Biden took too long con to condemn anti-Semitism and is pandering to his base. And the reason in part is because his base refuses to let them do so. He's pandering to politics as opposed to standing up for fairness and standing up against anti-Semitism. Um, that's interesting. Uh, what else did they have about Tim Scott in this one? Oh, of course. Tim Scott refused to say whether he will accept the result of the 2024 election, regardless of the winner, asserting at the end of the day, the 47th president of the United States will be President Donald Trump. And when challenged on this, he would not relent. That sounds like Trump's boy <laughs> as far as talking points. Now, if only could get Bergam to start talking like that, Bergam might shoot up the list here. But Tim Scott's echoing uh, the talking points. Basically, it sounds like uh, Tim Scott wouldn't accept the 2020 results, and he's not ready to accept the 2024 results either, even though we haven't even voted yet. What does Trump like about Tim Scott? Ah, the drunken hillbilly brawl card. Um, Tim Scott is part of the crazy. He is, he's willing to get in there and mix it up and, you know, fight for Trump. And he will, you know, he'll, he'll bring that form of crazy into his debates and his everyday living here. Um, they got the death card here. It's uh, bringing chapters to... Uh, a closure of chapters and beginning of, of a new day. Um, the king is dead. Long live the king. Um, I just, it's like Tim Scott maybe is putting 2020 behind him, but he's looking at 2024 as, you know, it's the same thing. It's a repeat of that cycle. Um, I will, and the other, on the other reading I got, I kept getting the Five of Cups. Uh, I'm noting that there's a lot of black in this card. The black armor, the black flag. One of the things he likes about Tim Scott is that he's black, and that might help him with black voters. Um, Trump knows he can manipulate Tim Scott. <laughs> Trump would be the absolute king, and Tim Scott would be his knight champion who would go out and fight for Trump. Tim Scott would lead the next insurrection. If Tim Scott were the VP during that insurrection, Tim Scott would have delayed the vote. Trump knows this through and through. Yeah, Tim Scott can be bought. He, he's, he's kissed the ring, so to speak. <laughs> the giggle is um, for the 40-something-year-old, 50-something-year-old virgin suddenly has a blonde fiance, soon to be a blonde wife, uh, that fits the Republican narrative that they want all their presidential candidates to be married, um, and they prefer the blonde chicks. Uh, but um, yeah, and not only that, you know, it's a, a card of a feminism and making sure everybody's taken care of. I imagine Walt Nada would have that similar thing. Uh, I'm not saying Tim Scott's gay, but. It, you would knock me over with a feather if I found out he was. Looked like Nico's ready to try and join us again. And he's got that look. He's waiting for permission. But I have a computer chair over here. He can join over here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Join up. Everybody wants to see the cat. And in the meeting yesterday, Trump liked Tim Scott because he was black, and Trump didn't like Tim Scott because he was black. <laughs> I don't know what Tim Scott can do about that. <laughs> he can't help the amount of melanin in his skin. Kind of kind of the body he chose. All right, so what does Trump not like about Tim Scott as his VP pick? Ooh. 
What does Trump not like about Tim Scott as his VP pick? Come on down, let's see. Mm. The world card. Kind of like Elise Stefanik. You know, he's gotten everything out of this guy that he really can get. Um, and it might, again, might be an optics thing going on here. Let's see how the uh, the cards... He's young. Maybe a bit foolish. You'd think that would play to his strengths, actually. A couple major arcana, by the way. Uh, King of Swords. And the Strength card by the Queen of Wands. Yeah, um... Wow, what does he not like about him? I think he just wonders how the world would judge him if he took this guy. He's young. He's kind of fawning and weak. You know, the, as mentioned, well, well, not if this was Trump, and this is not a, you know, getting him a Diet Coke and asking the baby if, if he's okay. Um... There's just, you know, there's like a, he, he picks on the, up on the effeminate nature of it. It's funny because Mike Pence was, also would fit into that as well. Um, yeah, I just don't think he likes the optics. I don't think he feels like he's a strong enough, he'll get in and fight, but he may not have the strength or the mastery in the fight that Trump wants. Um... Might seem like a dandy. How about that? This guy kind of looks like a dandy. A dandy uh, from like a, the French courts of the 1700s or something along those lines. I think that Trump thinks he's gay and Trump's not real excited about that. Black and gay. Again, that's entertainment purposes only. Uh... I have no idea his his sexuality. It's it just screams. So <laughs> my gator would not be surprised. Just saying. Now we got Christy Gnome, the the woman herself who who spent all Sunday pretty much defending herself against uh, against the passages of the book of her taking her uh, dog family dog out and puppy and shooting it in a gravel pit and then basically saying, you know, if I were to go get in the White House, Commander would meet Cricket, impl implying that she would shoot Joe Biden's dog because he's bitten a bunch of people. And, you know, Biden should have taken care of this long ago by shooting his dog. Now, the fact that Commander's not at the White House anymore is irrelevant to her narrative. She's just got to show that she's going to be a tough broad. By the way, I saw a picture of her from the Sunday thing. Uh, Christy Noem... I could see her being a very, I could see her, in my opinion, being attractive. But the way, what she's done with her hair and her makeup, she's starting to look like Christy, she doesn't look um, uh, Miss Gillifoyle there. And she's starting to look like a, a, a Disney villainess. You know what I mean? Her face is getting gone. She's got that long black hair. And the only thing she's missing is the dark eyebrows and the, the dark bags under her eyes. And she's right there to be a, a Disney villain. So to speak. So, what does Trump like about Christy Nome? Um, that uh, she's a she's she's a woman that he finds attractive, and she's got money and value. He he likes her values, especially with regards to wildlife. Here's your here's your bird, and there's no hunting dog anywhere near there. Trump famously does not like dogs. He finds them dirty, disgusting animals and uses that often as a um, insult for people. He likes her masculine nature in getting stuff done, even though she's a woman. Um, she's willing to walk away from her emotions. Nope, kill the family dog. Who cares what the kids think? Nope, I can do this. No problem. I can detach my emotions. She's like a woman who can detach from her emotions. And... Um, and judgment. Uh, she will, you know, she'll do heinous things. She'll, she will unalive things. If Trump tells her to unalive things, she will unalive things. He likes that. He likes that. He can tell her what to do and she will do it. Uh, yeah, and they will see eye to eye on things. He will get her to do things 
basically he could get her to do crimes that he wouldn't be able to get anybody else to do. That's what he likes about Christina. And I, I'm telling you, when that passage got out that she purposely included in, in her book that uh, she shot the family dog, I'm sure Trump had an evil gasm uh, upon hearing that one. Um, she also said that she stares down dictators. She can look Kim Jong-un right in the eye and stare him down. And then she was challenged that, um, when did you meet Kim Jong-un? And then she's like, oh, well, uh, you know, ghost writers and... Uh, I'll have that corrected in my book. Guess that was maybe a bit of an exaggeration. Okay. What is tr <laughs> what is Trump not like about Christy Nome as a VP pick? Other than probably every savvy political um, uh, uh, advisor is telling him, no, under no certain circumstances are you picking Christy Nome as your running mate. Ain't going to happen. You are going to alienate part of your base doing that. Other than that, what is he? What what's his criticism against Christy Nome? Ace of Wands. Okay, again, leave my perversions alone here. Just like Elise Stefanik, um, uh, big push on things. So what do we got here? Uh, money raising, money, definitely money in values, in disappointment and heartbreak, in the Ace of Swords. No, he likes her. He likes her a lot. He, he, this is, this is not what he doesn't like. This is what he, basically he's told that her actions and her justifications, they're going to cost him a big things of value. Fundraising is going to dry up and um, the base is going to be disappointed. I'm telling you though, he looks at her like, wow, she, I'm surprised she took a gun to that dog. Why didn't she take a club to him and beat him to death? This woman's got a point. This is this is my gal. You know, she's got my values. I could see her, you know, you're telling me not to take her, which is a huge disappointment, because that's who I want. This is my person. Trump wants Christine Ohm. If we were ever to hear, like, you know, five years from now, there's somebody comes out with a with their tell-all book on Donald Trump about the 2024 campaign, you'll probably find out that Christy Nome was his uh, was one of his top picks and that uh, this this they're saying she was falling out of the uh, out of the top ones I don't buy that I think she was Trump still wanted her to be his top pick but the toxicity of killing the dog is going to alienate too many rural men who hunt and have bird dogs it's just they're not going to like that. They're going to look at this woman as if, what the hell? You don't know what the hell you're doing. And all the still want to vote for Trump, they're not going to like her. They'll like, you know, if she were to take out a bunch of blue haired, nose pierced uh, uh, progressives and take them to the gravel pit out from the Palestinian protest, the gravel pit, oh, they'd be all for that. But don't shoot the dog. It's not the dog's fault. You know, it's, it's funny. You found a. Trump rarely finds bedrock, but he found bedrock with her. You know, you don't mess with a rural man's hunting dog. You just don't. You might have a better chance messing with his kids than his hunting dog. I'm just saying, it's kind of a toss-up. <laughs> okay, so what do I take away from all this? Uh, right now, I think Marco Rubio is his uh, primary pick, but, you know, we're months away from that, and Trump has to be healthy enough to make a pick at that point. And I really do wonder what the repercussions for Rubio are if Trump picks Rubio. Does Rubio have to step down from the Senate? I'm okay with that. <laughs> but we will see. Um, so thank you for uh, uh, watching this video now that it has sound. Thank you for your kind words, your uh, your comments and your shares and everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm. So this video makes that to a wider audience. To folks discovering this channel recently or for the first time, welcome to the channel. I promise I will be checking my sound on my videos for the next week or so because, you know, this is twi two, twice in two days. This is just ridiculous. Um, I thought I checked it before I loaded them up, but both my videos were silent yesterday. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.